The 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS is the Mark's first dedicated electric vehicle and the first Mercedes EQ brand to reach the US market. Sporting what the automaker claims is the world's lowest drag coefficient and the world's largest in-car screen and making as much as 516 horsepower, the EQS aims to put the Mercedes stamp on the electric vehicle segment by starting at the top. Mercedes has defined the idea of a full-size luxury sedan for decades in the form of its S-Class. It's big, powerful, smooth, quiet, with an interior packed with expensive materials and the latest technology. And by bringing the EQS to market, they did it again, but as an electric version featuring a tech-laden cabin and a choice of either one or two potent electric motors to power it. So, without any further ado, let's check out everything you need to know about it. At 205 inches long, the EQS splits the difference between the short and the long wheelbase version of the new S-Class, the latter of which is the only one we will get in the US. Its 126.4 inch wheelbase is slightly shorter than the long wheelbase S-Class, and the EQS is a little taller in height and about an inch narrower in width. It definitely has presence, thanks to its super long greenhouse, and it looks distinctive from the S-Class. The EQS also has a drag coefficient of 0.20, which makes it the most aerodynamic production car in the world. The front end is dominated by the black panel grille that connects the triangular LED headlights, which have a three-line element that denotes the EQS as part of the S-Class family. This grille actually has a functional purpose, as the sensors for the driver assist systems are housed behind it. The panel gets a pattern made up of dozens of three-pointed stars, an effect that's also found on some of the alloy wheels and details in the headlights. A light bar runs across the top of the panel, and you will be able to option the EQS with a light-up start too. Like other modern Mercedes models, there is a near-complete absence of any sort of hard lines on the body side. There is a light catcher character line and a thin chrome strip at the base of the front doors, and every EQS has a dark gray or gloss black trim running along the bottom of the bumpers and the side skirts. At the back, a central light bar extends across the rear end to connect the taillights, which get a super cool helix-shaped spiral motif. The back is smooth apart from the diffuser, and the license plate holder is in the lower bumper to declutter the trunk lid. Every EQS has a small lip spoiler at the base of the trunk lid, but interestingly, you can't get a rear windshield wiper. Jumping inside, we need to talk about the giant pillar-to-pillar 55-inch -pillar touchscreen, which Mercedes calls the hyperscreen. First teased earlier this year, the hyperscreen is the locus of the automaker's second-generation MBUX infotainment system that eschews physical buttons in favor of a completely digital user experience. And if you think it looks big in videos, I can promise you it's even bigger in real life. This thing absolutely dominates the interior of the EQS. But on a side note, it is not one seamless display. It's actually three separate screens embedded in one solid piece of curved glass. There is a 12.3-inch gauge cluster, a 17.7-inch central touchscreen, and a 12.3-inch passenger touchscreen. This new setup runs a new zero-layer version of Mercedes MBUX operating system, meaning the user never has to scroll through lots of submenus to get anywhere. On the navigation side, the system has what Mercedes calls electric intelligence, which takes into account everything from driving style and speed to topography and outside temperature. When inputting a destination and while driving, the screen shows your current range and battery's level of charge, as well as the amount you will have when you arrive. Along with rerouting to charging stations, you can set the amount of charge you want to have when you arrive at your final destination. The car will determine where you will need to charge and for how long once you get there. If you don't go for the hyper screen, however, the EQS dashboard looks similar to that of the new S-Class, with a vertically oriented 13-inch touchscreen rising up from the center console and a separate 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster and a large trim panel made of wood, leather, or other materials. This setup runs the same zero-layer MBUX system as the hyperscreen, and you get all the same features. Another incredible thing about the EQS's interior is the ambient lighting. Everything from the hyperscreen surround and the dash-spanning air vents to the seat backs and door armrests has LED light strips, and each strip can now shift color in different sections. 
there are a bunch of new color schemes, including one specific to the EQS that lights up when in motion to symbolize energy flow of the car, changing different colors when you accelerate or brake with regen. The lights are also integrated with the driver assist systems and can flash red as a warning. The EQS is the first Mercedes to be built on the brand's new EV exclusive MEA platform. Two models will be available, the EQS 450 and the EQS 580. But while Europe gets two battery pack sizes, the US will just get the bigger, larger 107.8 kWh pack. The EQS 450 is a rear-wheel drive only car with a single electric motor at the rear making 329 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Mercedes says that 450 will hit 60 miles per hour in 5.5 seconds and hit a top speed of 130 miles per hour. The all-wheel drive EQS 580 adds a second motor at the front for a total of 516 horsepower and 611 pound-feet. Its top speed is also 130 miles per hour, but it will hit 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds, only about half a second slower than the outgoing AMG S63. The 580's formatic all-wheel drive system can variably distribute torque between the front and rear axles, and Mercedes says its responses are much faster than traditional mechanical all-wheel drive systems. Every EQS comes standard with air suspension, which lowers its speed and has adaptive dampers and a front lift feature with a memory function. Rear wheel steering up to 4.5 degrees is standard, and the crazy looking 10 degree rear steering, also found on the S Class, is an option on some trims. The EQS has regen brake kit that's adjustable with paddles on the steering wheel and has a true one pedal mode. It also has an intelligent mode that uses sensors to look at the surroundings and adjust the amount needed of regen as you lift off the throttle. As for range, EPA figures won't be announced until later this year, but Mercedes claims the EQS has a range of up to 478 miles on optimistic European WLTP cycle. Expect the EPA figures to be closer to the 400 mile mark, which would still put the EQS at the top of the EV heap in terms of range. Tesla says the updated Model S will do 520 miles per charge in plate plus form or 412 miles in base form. And while those figures haven't been certified by the EPA yet, nothing aside from the Lucid Air comes even close. When it comes to charging, Mercedes says the EQS can charge from 10% to 80% in 35 minutes using a 110 kW DC fast charger, and it can also be charged using a 200 kW fast charger to add an impressive 186 miles of range in just 15 minutes. On a traditional 240 volt wall charger, it will take a little under 12 hours to go from 10% battery to fully charged. It will also be compatible with over 90% of the public charging stations in the US. As far as pricing goes, Mercedes says the EQS will go on sale in the US this fall and will cost something closer to what the new S-Class is sold for, but you can expect the EQS 580 to start closer to $130,000 mark. And as with all Mercedes models, it should be very easy to load that up with tens of thousands of dollars in options. So what do you think of this new EQS? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. Take care, and see you in the next one.